Hey everybody, I'm going to be showing you how to make this very simple animated overlay with an alpha layer, as you can see, an alpha layer for OBS in DaVinci Resolve 15.3 using the integrated Fusion workspace. First off, start up a new project and make sure to set your project settings by going to File, Project Settings here. Set your project settings to match your OBS settings. Usually people stream at uh, 30 or 60 frames per second, so I set my project to 30 frames per second to make it divide evenly into 60 without any leftover frames getting lost in the process. And so you can be used for both without any trouble. Next, I usually start with a blank PNG file set to the resolution I have my OBS background at, which happens to be 1920 by 1080 here. Uh, drop it into your media pool, drop it into your timeline, stretch it out to the length you want. I want it at 10 seconds, right about here. And then just stretch it out like that. Right click on it and select new fusion clip right there. And then go to your fusion tab to start. You can actually start working on it right here. Uh, now, before I do that, I want to point out a couple of other ways you can create a fusion clip and a couple of bugs currently in fusion in DaVinci Resolve in general. So let's start by clearing the media pool. Then if you open the effects library and you go down to generators under the toolbox subgroup, uh, you'll see fusion composition as an option, uh, which you can drop into the timeline and just go straight into the fusion from there if you want. But because of a bug in DaVinci Resolve's current implementation of fusion, when you go to render your fusion composition using this, it will never render more than five seconds. Even if you extend the length on the timeline before or after editing it, doesn't matter, it's just a bug. It's good for anything less than five seconds right here, but uh, since I wanna make something longer than five seconds, this is not gonna work. Another popular way of making a fusion clip to get around this bug is to drop a solid color generator right here onto the timeline, extending it out to the length you want, which in my case is going to be 10 seconds right here it just do it there we go highlighting it right clicking it go to new compound clip create right clicking it again then go to new fusion clip and now you can actually edit it in fusion but if you go back to your media pool you'll notice you have an extra compound clip as opposed to just a fusion clip by itself and it starts to clutter up things a little bit and i don't really like it myself but it's a good way of doing it and it will actually render out the entire length that you set it to. Although you can no longer, once you make it a fusion clip, you can no longer make it longer, but you can make it shorter. So bear that in mind. Make sure you have your settings in place before you actually select make a new fusion clip. Anyway, however you create your fusion clip, go ahead and open the fusion tab and let's get to work. I usually start by moving some of the default workspace around to actually get to the important stuff. That's not so important right now. And I will also set my arrange tools to grid just for my own personal organization method. You don't have to, it's not that important. I just like to do it this way. Uh, then I'll drag and drop a background node over the media node. Hello, background node over the media node. And then I'll merge it with the media out using one of two methods. Either you can use a merge node right here. You can drop this into the foreground, drop this into the background, which is the yellow area foreground's green, and then that's blue as a mask. And you can take the output, which is the square box, and drop it into the yellow triangle on the media out. That's one way of doing it. If you undo right here, the other way of doing it is to take the output, which is the square box on the background node, and drop it on the output, which is the square box on the media node, and it'll create a merge node for you with the background node as the foreground input. Then I'll select my background node and go to the inspector tab right here and uh, make sure you just go ahead and drop that down. Let's go ahead and move the workspace around again just to get things to fit. I don't need the splined tab for anything. I'm going to change the background type from solid color to gradient. And I'm going to set my first color, which is the highlighted triangle to red. And I'm going to highlight the second triangle by clicking on it and uh, select blue more or less and just take all the red out of it and then we actually have a red to blue color gradient looks pretty nice doesn't it now this next part's a little bit tricky because fusion organizes these triangles 
in the order you created them, so from youngest to oldest. So your most recent triangles will appear on top of the other triangles. But either way, I'm gonna click on the colored part to create a new triangle, not there though, of the same color and alpha as the color part is. So I will move each of these triangles over a little bit and then click outside of them. I want a blue triangle here and a red triangle here. Uh, this red triangle is the next one up. This The oldest red triangle, we're gonna set this one to negative 0.002. So it'll move it off the, off the gradient a little bit. This blue triangle, which is the next one we're gonna move, we're gonna set to 0 0.001. One, negative point zero zero one. And this final red triangle, the most recent, we're just gonna move it over to zero point zero. We're gonna move our blue triangle over one more time. And now we have our full gradient back and we want to set our first keyframe, move this little red orange bar over to the far left. So that your zero keyframe is, is marked here. We're gonna set this as a keyframe. And we're going to go to frame 150 right in the middle out of the 300 frames we got for 10 seconds at 30 frames per second. And we're going to move our topmost red one over to the right and, and just cover up that blue triangle. Uh, and that's our first keyframe, or second keyframe rather. And as you can see, it, it's made a nice phasing effect from one side to the other. And our third keyframe over here. We're gonna mark this one and we're gonna move the blue triangle all the way over to cover up the red triangle. And now we have our final keyframe. And that's all you've got to do to make a red on the left to blue on the right gradient, blue on the right to red on the left, uh, blue on the left to red on the right gradient, and then a back to a red on the left, blue on the right gradient. One quick warning though, because of another bug, DaVinci Resolve doesn't correctly save the keyframe data for gradients, so I wouldn't do anything too complicated until they fix it. For this last part, in order to get the alpha channel to do its job, all you have to do is highlight your background node, create a rectangle, um, and then set it to invert. Uh, and then you want to click the output box from the rectangle and put it onto the input mask node for both of them so that you can have the mask on both the top and bottom. Otherwise, as you can see, it won't, it'll won't. it only mask one, but not the other. Since you want an alpha channel here, you just want it masked. And you just change this to the size that you would like and move it around as you see fit to wherever you want. And that's pretty much it. Now you can just click deliver and it will deliver from beginning to end. The setting you want though, this is the special part here. I have a special setup alpha channel. Let's change the name on it so that it doesn't record over anything. You want your format as QuickTime. Your codec is uncompressed all the way at the bottom. And you want your type to be the second one, BGRA, A for alpha, 8-bit. Excuse me, because A or GB for some reason has problems. I don't know. And you want to make sure export alpha is checked. You add this to render queue. It'll ask you which uh, folder, which you can also set here if you want. One more thing you want to do is you want to make sure individual clips are checked. Because if you set single clip, you no longer have the option to create an alpha channel. So you want to set individual clips, export alpha, and add that to render queue. There it is in your render queue. Hit start render. Now we're just going to wait the next few seconds for this to finish rendering. And then we're going to play it on OBS just to show you what it does. It'll look a little bit different because I just made this one, but basically this is it. So uh, it take a few seconds here. This this uh, this is the free version of Adventure Resolve. It has some bugs, but it's still good for some things. All right, there we go. Our render is done. This is not the final step, however. Uh, let's actually we can just leave this open, and uh, let me go ahead and drop. Let me show you what I've created here. Let's add this, change my gradient setting here so that uh, you can actually see the new one. This is the alpha test I just made. You'll notice it's 2.43 gigs or two and a half gigs just about. We click open and we click OK and then we show it off. You will see it running kind of slow and chunky on OBS. That's because it's two and a half gigs in size and that's a ridiculous file size and OBS does not like it. So the trick, the final thing you got to do 
is I have created this batch file, which will turn in any MOV file into a WebM file, which is also capable of supporting an alpha channel. So what you do here is you can just copy this. I will have this in the description and you can just use it this way if you want. All it does is convert MOV files to WebM files using the lib, the libv codex and for the video at six megabits right here. This is your bit rate with auto alt ref turned off and pix format YUVA 420p, the A standing for alpha usually. And that's all. That's it. That's all. You just copy this whole line in there. Uh, this is the individual ffmpeg command this one can take a whole folder of png files if you'd like and can and do the same thing but not necessary i like to do it to a video file using it this way anyway let's close it double click this it'll run for another couple of seconds and i will just cut this out because it's doing another 300 frames of course and it doesn't do it that fast all right and here we are you notice this alpha test uh, WebM file is now only 890k, significantly different from the two and a half gig file. And be, if we go ahead and uh, change this from this two and a half gig file, that's all chunky right here. See it all being chunky there. And we go to the 890k file and we select OK. You will notice, bam, it's all smoothed out, looks very nice. And as a matter of fact, you can see it just looping very nicely as well. And that's all you got to do. You have a complete overlay. And also, if you want, you can just go back to Fusion. You can mess around with it a little bit too. You can change the overlay angle by going to your background and moving this little this little guy right here. Let's see, I can't sketch up on it. This little square. We'll just take this square over here and change the angle of the gradient so it looks a little different from top left to bottom right this time. And let's see what it's going to look like when we play it back. Okay, let's go to the Deliver tab and take a look at it one more time. Then we add this to Render Queue. Start render, replace. And we'll do this one more time just to show you how this one looks and then that'll call it. And then once that's done, of course, I'm gonna rename this a little bit. Not what I wanna do. Get that to work. Go back to here. All done there. Just go to OBS, go to OBS, and then we're going to change this once again from this alpha test to this one that we just made, and then turn it on. Let's take a look at that. How does that look? Well, that's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I'm going to try and throw a little outro on here. Like, subscribe. Let me know if you want more of these. I'm going to try and make some pretty nice looking ones for my channel myself. Have a nice night, everybody. I'll catch y'all later. Oh. Mm -hmm.